Julian, we met years back when you were a techie, and then I read of you in uh, Rashmi Seagal's book. So, in between, can you explain what happened? <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I, I did. I mean, you remember me, and uh, I used to like Linux. I like tech. A lot of people think I one of those disgruntled software engineer who took on wire found is too many, but actually no, I like my technicals, I still code, I still do open source. Uh, but I had a burnout and, and I thought I'd take a sabbatical and I wanted to do something completely different. So I went into the jungle to spend time with the camera. It appeals to the creative side of your brain, wildlife photography? Absolutely, very much. I think both learning about wildlife itself, you know, which is very interesting, fascinating, and use photography as a tool to capture what you see. So it's a combination of two things. And I like both photography and wildlife independently. But it's very hard work. No, I read of your story yeah. where you were offered to work for free and right, yeah. you know, no, the it, jungle it, lodges. It, it took me almost two and a half, three years to even start earning, earning basic uh, needs for myself. Uh, and it is, I mean, you know, any career, I think you have to give it that, I think. Thankfully for me, because I came from an IT thing, I had a bit of money saved up, which yeah. came with that cushion. So, what's the scene of wildlife photography in India today? How many guys are doing it full time? How, less how than good 10. are they? <laughs> Probably less than five, actually. Less than five. Yeah, because uh, in India the market is almost non-existent. Because yeah. India traditionally and even now people don't pay for photographs. They don't mind spending five lakhs for a painting, but when you, when you ask ten thousand for a picture, they suddenly say, "Ah, oh, you're just there," kind of thing attitude. It's changing. It's changing fast because people are spending money, so they're trying to spend money on photographs and on photography-related uh, things. So it's really better, but uh, if you look at editorial thing, that's what primary photographers do. They hardly pay anything. So even today, I make most of my money through international uh, sales. sales. And even that is still very little. So most photographers in India, they don't do just editorial photography. So if I do workshops to supplement my yeah. income. I do, I do wildlife films, actually, for National Geographic and all that. that also, they pay pretty well. So it's a, you need to do a combination Correct. of things. Right. You can't but do more. your specialization is wildlife. There's nothing beyond it. No, no. But, but within wildlife, again, I, I like doing conservation stories and I like telling stories, conservation issues, highlight those using pictures and videos. So what's so, your collection like in terms of images? I've, oh, it's very difficult. I, I shot more than 10 lakh pictures. 10 lakh? Yeah. On how many cameras? I've, I think I've changed four or five cameras. So that would average how many pictures a day? Quite a bit. I mean, it depends. Sometimes, depending on where I am, on a good day, I shoot 2,000 pictures, 3,000 oh, pictures. Wow. There are times when two weeks I'm waiting for something to turn up and I haven't taken a single picture. So. But then what's the logistic of storing these pictures and how do you... So, so I think that's one good news is the hard disk have become very cheap. You get a one terabyte for 4,000 rupees now. So I don't delete my pictures, I just keep dumping all of them. And, and how many you have? How many hard disks have you? I have about, about eight, eight, nine terabytes of images. I about. see. Yeah. So cataloging them and all must be a huge struggle. Yeah, it's, it's big. So in fact, as not just cataloging this, here's another thing. Everyone thinks photographers is, is uh, jobs are a romantic thing. You're out in the field chasing animals, but 60% of the time I still end up time copying pictures, cataloging, writing, doing my budget, doing proposals, yeah. applying for permission. So yeah, it's, it's there. I mean, you know, there is. It, the grass is always green on the other side. You know, so. so from here, where what are your next plans? I mean, you've done so far, and uh, you know, first before that, I should ask, what are your high points of your career? What would you consider the three most Soul satisfying moments. I think I've been fortunate enough to be able to do what I want whenever I wanted in my life, and for what it's worth, I've been able to serve and make a career. It's a really uh, passionate about that. But one thing I think over the last few years, I have been more drawn towards social and environmental issues, and I'm not insecure in terms of having salary and all that. I'm, I think I can earn money, you know, mm. or whatever, doing whatever it is. So, at least I want to spend next few years of my life trying to use my photography for environmental issues. Awareness building? I would not just awareness building, actually fight hard battles. I think uh, a lot of people do the awareness building, bit, yeah. but um, someone has oh. to do the hard battles also. Yeah. But you were mentioning that uh, it is, uh, you know, very difficult for, I mean that you've seen uh, things change for the worse in your own few years. You're, you're still young as you're pointing out. But yeah, exactly. Yeah. So where exactly, uh, in what sense? Across, I mean, in the sense... Uh, and what is contributing to this? Is this a growing middle-class Indian consumerism? Actually, it's not. It's unfortunate. It's, it's, thankfully, it's not, you know. Okay. Uh, I think it's right now, with the corrupt... In fact, the last few years, it's been the mining lobby, frankly. I see. You know, in the sense, people call this development that everyone talks about, you know, country yeah. should balance. Frankly, the common, the middle-class, even the upper 
the rich middle class now, they are not fighting for development, they are happy with the way things are. Yeah. We've had a boom the last two decades and people are quite happy with it. They are not fighting, say, oh, we want more boom, we want 9.9, 10% GDP growth every year. It's this probably 1% of the top industrialists yeah. who want that because for them, that's how the companies grow, let it be the reliance. I mean, I don't want to take names, but yeah. any of these companies. So, it's unfortunate that most of the ministry, if you look at the civil aviation ministry, uh, whatever thing they're working for, for the benefit of the industrialists, then the common arm janta, mm -hmm. and the poor Jairam Ramesh, who's probably the only minister who's actually fighting for the cause of the people. Like for, I'm just to give an example, so yeah. this Vedanta and POSCO, I'm sure you're aware of yeah. this, right? Not a single person wants that. I, no one in Bangalore wants a POSCO, not a, not, not a tribal in Odisha wants a POSCO, no one this thing. It's just few industrialists yes. because politicians will get a lot of money, brown bribes, that these industrialists who steal mine and steal industries, this thing. So, for benefit of maybe 30, 40 people, you're taking away entire forest, you know. And I think this kind of in injustice needs to stop. You so. have got a whole lot of recognition and, and, and uh, you know, access to the best publications in the world. Which, which were the most uh, rewarding for you, being there? I think, <laughs> I don't think any of these are as rewarding as you, the, the high that you get of being alone in the jungle, with mm. when you forget the outside world and, and the, just, just that quiet solitude that you have in the forest, nothing in the world. Any life-threatening moments? Mostly by people and wildlife. <laughs> I think uh, if you know wildlife, you know how to survive. And most right. often, as a, I'm, I'm very serious about this, because places like Northeast and all that, you might just bump into an alpha camp and, and they just might shoot you, you know, you, you don't know. Most often I'm worried about driving from here to the forest and the highway get hit by something. Once I'm in the forest, I'm pretty safe. <laughs> so where all have you shot? Which countries? Uh, India I've done quite extensive, except Himalayas, spent quite, quite a bit of time on other places. I've done a little bit of work in Africa, and now in Southeast Asia, and Borneo rainforest and all that. Uh, this year I'm aiming to go to Congo, spend about a few, uh, spend some time in mm -hmm. Congo exploring that place. And what's your favorite camera? Uh, there is no favorite camera, frankly. I use anything. I, I used right. to use Nikon. I'm now I have both Nikon and Canon, and I keep changing. Uh, at the end of the day, it's the, it's like computers, programmer, you know. Uh, he, uh, he uses a MacBook or a Dell laptop, he still writes a, a good programmer, writes a good program, irrespective of the tools. So the cameras like that. Thanks. I mean, I use Nikon, uh, Nikon uh, D700, but uh, I'm just like, I mean, convenient with it. I wouldn't say it's the best, anything like that. And you are now what age? I'm 31. Thanks and all the best. Sure.